everyone, Rupert Goff here from Mortgage Lab. Today I'm talking about reapplying for a mortgage after being declined by a bank. Typically you can reapply with a bank that rejected you about three to six months after you were declined. The bank will let you know the exact period when they advise you that your application wasn't successful. You can of course apply at any other bank straight away. Now, I don't want to shamelessly plug mortgage brokers here, but if you're getting declined by banks directly, it's safe to say it's time to talk to a broker. They will find out which bank is most likely to approve your application and give you advice on how to improve your chances of approval. If you're not in a position to get a mortgage with a bank, you may be able to get a loan with a non-bank lender. Your broker will go through all of these options with you. A bank's acceptance criteria can change week to week and your broker will be across the different criterias for each bank. Your options will depend on the reason your application was rejected. Generally the reasons will fall into one of three categories, not enough income, not enough deposit or a bad credit score. If a bank wasn't willing to lend you what you need due to your income, there are a couple of options to look into with your mortgage broker. Firstly, the banks all use different calculations to determine affordability. This means your income may meet the threshold of another bank. The exact same application that was rejected at one bank may be successful at another. Secondly, the banks take into account any debt you have when calculating your income. If debt is the reason your income isn't high enough, look into whether there are some quick gains to be made. The bank calculates your credit card debt based on the card's limits, not what you currently owe. Reduce your credit card limits as much as possible. If you have any higher purchases or student loan that is nearly paid off, look into paying them in full to get rid of them, but make sure paying them off doesn't reduce your deposit too much. Once you've worked through these options, put together a plan to get any remaining debt down as soon as possible. As to increasing your income, that of course is easier said than done. Be proactive about pursuing opportunities for advancement in your job now rather than later. And if you have a case for requesting a raise, then find the courage to ask. It's an uncomfortable conversation to have, but could ultimately get you a mortgage. Finally, a non-bank lender, otherwise known as a second tier lender, may be an option for you. They don't put as much weight on your income when deciding whether to give you a loan and are generally happy to loan to the relatively newly self-employed. However, to allow them to take risks that the banks won't, they charge a much higher interest rate. This therefore is a short-term strategy to get you into the housing market. Put a plan in place to get yourself approved for a bank mortgage within two or so years. Note that there are some additional costs to using a second tier lender, including a broker fee, as unlike the banks, they don't pay mortgage brokers directly. If none of the things I've listed are an option for you, it's time to think long term. Get debt down and keep it down. Look into career progression paths that will result in a higher income. This may mean some study costs in the shorter term, but if you invest in education wisely and with a clear financial end goal, it will likely be worth it in the long run. These are all big challenges to tackle. Approach them one at a time, track your progress and celebrate any milestones along the way. So I've covered income, but what if your application was rejected due to not having enough deposit? There are options. If you weren't too far off a 20% deposit, another bank may still be able to approve your mortgage. Each of the banks have a certain amount of money they can loan at over 80% LVR. They can have a small number of mortgages on their books with as little as 10% deposit for existing properties and even down to 5% for new builds. Note, however, that your income needs to be good for you to be considered for one of these low equity loans. Funding for these types of mortgages depends on how much low equity lending a bank has on their books at the time. This means a big part of whether your application is successful comes down to timing. Your mortgage broker will know when a bank is open for mortgage applications with less than a 20% deposit, and so you will be able to time your application just right. Check also whether you are eligible to use your KiwiSaver or get the first home grant or first home loan. With KiwiSaver, you may still be 
With KiwiSaver, you may still be eligible to use your deposit, even if you have previously owned a property. To decide if you qualify, the government will assess your application to determine whether you are in a similar financial position as a first home buyer. A non-bank lender may be an option for those declined by the banks due to deposit, just as they are an option for those declined due to income. As stated above, to allow non-bank lenders to take risks that the banks won't, they charge a higher interest rate. They're a good short-term strategy to get into the market as long as you have a pathway to get a bank mortgage within a couple of years. If at the end of the day you just have to grow your savings, double check if you will be eligible to use your KiwiSaver for the deposit. If the answer is yes, focus on putting your savings there rather than in a bank account so as to get the most growth from your money. If your application was declined by the bank due to a bad credit score, first check your credit report to ensure the details are correct. Now let's talk about bad credit. If your credit report is incorrect, it's important to get the correction process underway immediately. It's a hard journey as many people have tried to scan the system and there is a high burden of proof. So take some time, some deep breaths, promise yourself as many glasses of wine or herbal teas as you will require and get prepared to compile a lot of paperwork and to follow up on progress daily. If your credit report is correct, then focus on lifting your credit score. You can do this by paying your bills on time, reducing your credit card limits and paying off higher purchases, car loans and so on. Even with bad credit, you may be able to get a loan from a non-bank lender. They will price their interest rates higher than the banks to cover their risk. The worse the credit score is, the higher the interest rate will be. Make sure you'll be able to service your mortgage at the same time as improving your credit score. Remember, the goal is to have a mortgage with a bank within a couple of years. There you have it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to know more on this subject or are looking for advice specific to your circumstances, reach out on social media or talk through the Mortgage Lab website. Talk to you soon.